Okay, and now for our final question, uh, another one that's not too bad. Um, so hopefully it's letting you recover from number 18 a little bit. So calculate the greatest common divisor, write a function that takes two integers and returns their greatest common divisor. That is the biggest number that evenly divides both of those numbers. Um, now it does say using the Euclidean algorithm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show you one way, and then I'm gonna show you the Euclidean algorithm way, uh, because the the greatest common divisor function is is kind of a fun one. It's looks it seems straightforward, but for very large numbers, it actually is extremely slow. And I'll talk through that. Um, I'll show you the Euclidean algorithm though as an example of hey, if you already have an algorithm, how do you convert it into code? All right, so. We're going to have a function that's going to return an int that is the greatest, the, the largest number that evenly divides both inputs. We'll call this guy GCD. This is going to take in an int A aye, 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 and an int B. All right, then we'll go below here and we'll implement it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to find out which number is larger between these two, um, because that is the, the the bigger number is the one that is going to be the biggest possible uh, common divisor. Um, you know, you if, if you're operating off the smaller number, it's never going to be evenly divisible by the, the larger number. All right, so well, actually, I, I, I have that backwards. We want to find the smaller of the two values because that is the largest number it possibly could be that evenly divides both. All right, so we're going to say if A is less than B, I'm just going to go ahead and put, I'm going to say smallest is, I'll make a guess and say smallest is A initially, and then I'll check if B was actually smaller, then we'll just change smallest to be B. All right. So when we get to this line right here, smallest holds the smaller of A and B. Okay, so now the straightforward way of doing this would be to check all the values from smaller down to one into finding the largest one that evenly divides both A and B. So we'll say for int i is equal to smallest, i is greater than or equal to one. And the reason we go down to one is we know both numbers are evenly divisible by one. So it's possible that they're already, think about this as being related to like reducing fractions. That's how we'll look at it when we cover this in class. Um, but uh, um, we are, uh, we know all numbers are evenly divisible by one. But in this case, we wouldn't reduce it. Like three fourths, they don't have a common divisor other than one, three and four. All right. So we'll say I minus minus. And we'll just ask the question if A mod I is equal to zero, that is, I evenly divides A. And B mod I is equal to zero. If both of those things are true, now this will work as is here, but I'm going to go ahead and just put these in parentheses. I think it looks a little cleaner. So you can see that we have two separate little Boolean expressions that we then put together into a more complex one using the uh, double ampersands for and. So if a is evenly divisible by the current value of i, and b is evenly divisible by the current value of i, and i started off as the largest possible value that could evenly divide both of them, then we'll go ahead and return i, which is the greatest common divisor of those uh, two. All right. All right, so that is an example of greatest common divisor kind of the brute force way. So we can test this by saying um, int answer is equal to 
um, we'll call GCD. Now, one thing you want to be a little careful about calling functions GCD because that is built into a lot of languages. Um, we're not importing a library here, so it's not. But if you were doing this in a newer language, be careful because there might already be a function built into the language called GCD, which actually does exactly what you want it to do. Um, but because here we're, we're writing our own version of it, uh, we want to be able to test it. So we'll go ahead and let's just test it on one of the examples I gave you, three and four. So if we had the fraction three-fourths and we were trying to reduce that, we're going to be looking for the biggest number that evenly divides three and four. In this case, the answer is one. There aren't, There isn't a bigger number than one that evenly divides both of those. So... We should see our one here. Oh, we actually got to return our value. Okay, notice here that we happen to know that all numbers are evenly divisible by one. So we know we will eventually get into that return statement. So maybe down here, we can just say return negative one and we'll just do a C out. Something went wrong. We know we're never going to get to this line. Because all because we happen to know the truth that all numbers are evenly divisible by one. All right, so there's our one for the greatest common divisor of three and four. What if I do six and eight? Now it doesn't matter which order I put them in there because we figure out which is the uh, greatest number or the smaller of those two numbers. So the largest value that even the, evenly divides both six and eight is two. So there's our two. All right, so now if we just kind of build a, a bigger number here. All right, I don't know what the answer of this one is, but I know it's gonna be correct when we run it. So I give it two medium sized numbers, we run it, we get a one. <laughs> That's actually funny. I happen to pick two numbers that are, uh, um, oh, it's because this guy is, uh, was odd here. So greatest common divisor for my updated numbers now is four. Now, hopefully you're actually seeing that there's a slight little delay. So as I make this number even bigger, Oh, I've actually gotten too big for integers. There we go. So did you see how that that was definitely a pause? It took longer. So this is a time complexity problem. So let me go ahead and just show you. Famous guy, Euclid. You probably took Euclidean geometry in high school. He has an algorithm he came up with called the Euclidean algorithm, which is a, a more efficient version of solving for greatest common divisor. And what I'm going to do here is I'll scroll down. They're going to have the pseudocode for this somewhere in here. Here we go. So this is that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to create another function here. Int gcd underscore euclid this will take in an int a and an int b i'm gonna have to copy this and then go and copy the web again So what I'll do is just right before we implement that guy, I'm just going to put it inside of a comment, the algorithm we're trying to mimic there. Okay. So this is an algorithm that already exists. All right. It's, it's math based. Okay. So this isn't something that I would have expected you to come up with on your own, but it is, we're going to see it's a significantly more efficient thing. And notice that it's not overly difficult to uh, write. We're just going to convert this into its C++ equivalent. All right. So we're going to say while B 
is not equal to zero, we're going to have a new variable called t. So we're going to say int t right here before the while loop. And we'll go ahead and say t is equal to b. We're preserving the current value of b. Then we're changing the current value of b to be whatever a is mod b. And then we're updating a b equal to t. Okay, so preserve b, change b to a mod b, and then update a to the old b, which we had preserved inside of t. When this while loop finally ends, when b is zero, we'll go ahead and return whatever value is currently living in a. All right, so that is the Euclidean algorithm, the greatest common divisor. What I'm going to do here, I'll just copy that. And instead of calling our GCD function here, I'll call our GCD Euclid. Can you notice how fast that ran? Keep in mind that the delay there was the internet not loading the page very quickly. All right. As opposed to calling it with our normal GCD. See the delay? So imagine as numbers get even bigger, um, you run into a situation where uh, we're going to write a thing in class where we uh, add up a whole bunch of fractions and reduce uh, reduce them. So you'll end up with a fraction with a gigantic numerator and a gigantic denominator, and we'll make them longs to really exa ex uh, exaggerate this. And you'll have accurate code using our version of GCD that we wrote using our minds here, yet it might take a week to run for something like reducing a fraction just because of the number of numbers we have to check where the Euclidean algorithm will run almost instantly. All right, so kind of a cool uh, uh, example where sometimes these famous algorithms that were already created for us can be helpful and you can go find the algorithm. This is usually called pseudocode. It's in some language uh, or no language, just program-esque. Uh, and then you can just convert it to the language you're working with. And again, greatest common divisor is actually built into most programming languages and it's implemented using the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, but this gives you the experience of writing it yourself kind of in the way that made the most sense. But then you run into a situation where you might think, especially for large numbers, that you're in an infinite loop when it's actually just not done because we're very used to functions basically running instantly because 99.9% .9 of the time, computers are really, really fast. And therefore, uh, you know, we don't notice a really slow algorithm versus a really fast algorithm because it feels instant. Okay, so there we go. That's the last question on the uh, review. I'll go ahead and upload this video, and then I'll also send out a document that has all the questions with the video links in case you'd rather just kind of look at the answer to the code rather than watch the uh, videos.